Are you ready for some answers? Because I know I am. I gotta throw on some skincare, blow dry my hair, and I'll tell you what the doctor said. Let me see if I can get this right now. Three, two, one. No, four, three, two, one, go. Well, you know, I could get my makeup on first. We'll hurry through it. How have you guys been? Drop it in the comments. I've been like stuck and not doing so great with these new meds they've got me on, but I'm hoping to ride tomorrow. We've got to do this first. It does, it, it, it hurts a little bit, beauty. Vanity. Ha! Ah. Shit. Ah. Ah. Supposed to build collagen. At 60, I need collagen. Ooh, look at that uncolored hair. I'm actually kind of digging it. What the hell are you doing? Crazy dog. Hair growth. COVID made me lose about a third of my hair. But let's just speed this process up, shall we? Stem cells, not from babies. See what else really bad about putting the lids back on your little bottles? <laughs> I was gonna put rice water in my hair, but it smells like vomit. And I've already got my other stuff in, so forget it. We're just gonna go straight in for the blow dry. Hello? It was a phone call. Rude. Kind of digging the way this is coming out up front. What are you guys saying? Drop it in the comments. And subscribe and like, please. I have my dad's hair up front and my mother's hair back here. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. I don't know what to do. Credible. In case any of you guys are interested, I don't know. Cream tea water bomb. Ooh, I look awfully white in there. It's like, I got up yesterday, I went to my coffee. You know, we bought this really expensive espresso maker so I would stop spending money at Starbucks. I got up to make my my latte yesterday. It wouldn't grind the beans. I wasn't happy. Ugh, freaking damn mirror. Okay. Let's talk about this possible diagnosis. I've been having a really difficult time with my cardiologist because he thinks I'm stupid. <laughs> Let me read you part of what he wrote me. As if I didn't know what an echocardiogram was. An, e an echocardiogram is a very specialized and technical imaging study that requires a great deal of specialized knowledge to understand. I cannot summarize all the nuances of your echocardiogram and the questions you've asked. So then he goes on and he tells me basically my heart is normal shape, normal size, there's no thickening of the walls, any of that. He told me that the reason that the echo was done, lower extremity edema. No, I wrote back. That's not why it was done. It was done because walking less than five feet, my heart jumps up to about 160 beats per minute. I've never had swollen feet and I can't breathe. I don't know if you can see me struggling to breathe now, but friends have been able to see that. My doctors that I have, my virtual visits, are asked me consistently, what's going on? Why can you not breathe? Uh, then he goes on to say, increased pressure in the right side of my heart. Okay, I wrote him back, it wasn't so cool. But I wasn't, I wasn't rude either. I, I just pretty much said, thank you for explaining the portions you did. I greatly appreciate it. There were three factors, not one, that contributed to this echocardiogram. I went on to talk about my shortness of breath, my heart rate, and the edema which I haven't had and that's like freaking me out. My life is on hold, I want it back. Then he says, I'm so sorry to hear you're not feeling well and are having significant shortness of breath. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been telling you for two years. After he received my reply, pretty much indicating I'm not stupid, I do understand a lot of these things and you know, I'm paying, I'm not sure what my insurance is, Every month, my premiums are probably around $1,000 a month. I'm not sure how much he gets to read the echo, but for whatever 
is in that echocardiogram, if I want him to explain one sentence, one word, with the money he's being paid and the money that I'm paying for my insurance, I think he should do that. Then I saw another doctor. Let him see my echo. He said, all of your symptoms suggest pulmonary hypertension. Then he asked me what drugs I may have been exposed to in the past. So in the early 90s, I was on a medication. I think a lot of you may remember it. I don't even know why I was on this medication. I've never really been heavy, but I was on the medication FinFin. His antenna went up. Then he asked me what street drugs I may have been exposed to in the time period that this started. And I started to tell him and he said, Terry, I want you to go and research this. From what I'm seeing, this may be drug-induced pulmonary hypertension, which is rare and can be deadly. Okay, so I'm freaking out. Then he's telling me life expectancy is generally two and a half to five years after diagnosis. Okay, so this whole thing started like two years ago. I did a lot of reading this, this weekend. Didn't really help me a whole lot. I, I was reading a lot of the medical studies, not just anecdotal materials suggesting that lifespan can be up to 10 years and in some patients with little damage to their heart, it can be up to 20 years. I'm cool with 20 years. You know, I, truthfully, I'm cool with two and a half years. What I worry about, Michael, Nikki, and Joshua. You know, I, I'm, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very, I'm very frustrated. Now the doctor did order, the first doctor, my cardiologist, who, I think I'm going to be switching cardiologists just because he has this um, complex that people are dumb. I mean, unless you're a cardiologist. He did order a BMP, a BNP, and a CBC with differential. The BMP and the BNP are to check for pulmonary hypertension. The next part of that, there is going to be, I think, they said a six minute walking test, stress test, a, what was the other one? A, um, sorry, I have to look at the one behind me. It says 6% of the cases are inheritable. My parents didn't have this. They had, my, my dad had something completely different that was related to his alcoholism and his smoking. So here, here we come to, in some cases, it can be drug induced. The most, the medication most famous for causing this is FinFin, which I was on. Idiopathic, inheritable, drug-induced, and associative. So it seems like mine is falling more in the category of drug-induced, which, by the way, is the one with the shortest lifespan. Thank you. Love that. Given how rare it is when a patient complains of such symptoms such as exhaustion, labored breathing, it is not, not unusual for a doctor to first order testing for conditions like asthma and congestive heart failure. That was done and ruled out. I don't have asthma, I don't have congestive heart failure. Your doctor will need to rule out all other forms of pulmonary hypertension before giving you a diagnosis. Okay, once your physician suspects pulmonary hypertension, they'll order a series of tests that may include an x-ray. I've got those done, they look good. A pulmonary function test. I have an appointment with a pulmonologist November 1st. An exercise tolerance test, which I can tell you my ability to exercise previous to two years ago. I was in the gym all the time, doing cardio, weightlifting, strength building, all of that. I was in pretty good shape. Now, not so much. If signs all still point to pulmonary hypertension, which it looks like it does, I would probably require a right heart catheterization, which would measure the pressures inside the pulmonary arteries. That kind of scares me. 
I'm, I'm sure that I would probably be asleep maybe. I don't know. But that kind of scares me. If you know, put it in the comments for me. It's creepy. That means they have to go up through your leg, right? Through an artery? Oh no, I don't want that. But I don't want to know what's going on. So here's the part that one of my doctors sent me. And what website am I on? I am on Johnson & Johnson right now, but it's also the same on the Mayo Clinic, on WebMD, and reputable websites, not like I said, anecdotal stuff. The median survival rate from time of diagnosis used to be two and a half years. Now it's about seven years. Makes me feel a little bit better. And some people are living as long as 20 years after diagnosis. There is no cure for this, but it can be managed if that's what it is. The things I go ha that I have in my favor that I didn't realize when I was first, all of this stuff was going on and they're telling me you have a probable diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension, get your affairs in order. Is my heart has no thickening it's working right it seems to be functioning correctly i just have right side pressure and i think he said but i'm not really sure the left side is not pumping out as much blood as it should be and that's causing i don't know i'm not a cardiologist but i don't know, really know a lot about the heart i didn't go to school for cardiology i went to school for political science american history and then business in English. The heart wasn't really in that part. Got my parents' autopsies, none of this. I guess one of my aunts was watching uh, one of my videos and said that her sister has congestive heart failure and it could be genetic. Well, congestive heart failure has been ruled out. So it's kind of, we're kind of throwing things out and looking at the pulmonary hypertension. Everyone's given me kind of a different take on it um, to get your affairs in order, to take fluorosamide and you should be fine, to, well, we'll see what can be done to manage it. I mean, I'm getting all these different answers and none of them are making sense. None of them really correlate. It's almost as if the answers I'm being given are being drawn from a hat. I don't like that. I mean, geez, yeah, people have it a lot worse. You know, I was sick with COVID. I was sick with COVID for about three, well, I was sick with COVID for about six weeks, six to eight weeks, and then you know, I had it bad, bad, bad. And then I got COVID pneumonia. Been through that, it sucked. I would do that again not to have whatever this is going on and one of the things i don't want happening which has happened a lot trying to figure out what this problem is since COVID and since they knew i had COVID, they dump it in the COVID bucket and say well it's a residual from your COVID." well no it's not because it started two years ago before anyone knew about COVID. i just want to know what's going on What's really funny is there are days I feel fantastic and I can ride my motorcycle. I wish today was one of those and I would be able to get out and ride my motorcycle. I'm having palpitations. My blood oxygen is, is, is pretty low today and my heart rate is pretty high. So it's not a day I'm going to choose to be on my motorcycle. And so I'm hoping tomorrow I might feel well enough to go on a ride because I want to ride around Mount Hood. Yeah, uh, you know, that's what I'm talking about. I want to get on my motorcycle. I have things to do. So damn it, get this stuff in order. But as of now, that's what it's looking like. This pulmonary hypertension. I have a lot of pressure in the right side of my heart. The left side of my heart's not doing what it's supposed to do. But yet my heart is shaped normally. What the heck? Paint me zebra? I don't know. Anyway, guys, love you. Hang in there. You know we'll keep you updated because it's driving me crazy. Drop some comments. Please sub -ba. Please subscribe. Love you guys. And hopefully I can ride tomorrow. Peace.
síly. 